I'm, I'm doing my worship this morning and every morning the Lord is always bringing me some really powerful things and sometimes there's reoccurring themes that he really wants to point out and show me. I don't know about your personal worship but um, I feel as if Jesus is definitely right, right here with me, <laughs> guiding me and teaching me through his Holy Spirit. Uh, but this morning there's something that I really wanted to share um, with all of you and so let, let me just dive into it. So this is from a book called uh, Prophets and, and, and Kings, and I love it because it just it takes scripture and it, um, it explains it, it expounds, it just, um, for the average person uh, who really wants um, not just to sit with God's word, uh, but wants to dive deeper, this book is really a blessing. But I want to read what the Lord just brought me, and I opened this up randomly, and it says, Elijah had thought he alone in Israel was a worshiper of the true God. And, and I thought, oh, that's interesting. He thought he alone was the worshiper of a true God. Now listen to this. But he who reads the hearts of all revealed to the prophet that there were many others who through the long years of apostasy had remained true to him. Um, I want to expound a little bit of that because as believers right now, we're living in a time when we are definitely surrounded, right, by social media, screaming in our face through TikTok, through Twitter, through um, Facebook, making us believe that us Christians are really nominal. We have no voice. We're bigots. We're um, prejudiced against everybody. We're certainly a minority. I mean, do you do you feel that? Because if, if you if you watch all of the things on Twitter, it, it makes you believe that we definitely may be on the wrong side. And so when I read that, I thought, ah, oh, Elijah felt the same way when he was in Israel. But listen to this. It says, from Elijah's experience during those days of discouragement and apparent defeat, there are many lessons to be drawn. Lessons invaluable to the servants of God in this age, marked as it is by general departure from right. It says the apostle, raise your hand if what I just said resonates with you, that the, that the law of God is declared to be of no effect. Now, we, we know that. We see that what is right is wrong and what is wrong is right. The, you know, God's standard, his holy standard, has been so compromised through the ages, but even now it's being blasphemed and trampled on, and, and it's so distorted. You can be whatever you want. Doesn't the kids in school now, they've got litter boxes so they can be cats. Or if you want to be a dog and you want to bark during school, you can be that too. You can choose what you want. Children are too young to choose. Choose um, their own human sexuality. They, they re I, I don't even want to get in an argument about that because it's just that we are created in God's image. What is God's image? We're God's image. Us human beings, Adam and Eve, were created in God's image. We are humankind. And now we can be, I mean, just like in Sodom and Gomorrah, the things that they were doing, and the, the antediluvian world before Noah, before the flood, we're, we're there. It says the enemy of all truth is working with deceptive power to cause men and women to place human institutions where God should be and to forget that which was ordained for the happiness and salvation of mankind. God has come to give us life abundantly. And Satan's got another plan. And he uses human in intuitions. He uses science. You know, God is the God of science. But man takes us over trying to explain things that they can't explain. And they're fools. You no. Know? And it says, yet this apostasy, widespread as it has come to be, is not universal. Now, here's, here's the part that I started reading that gave me great hope. Because they want us to think that we're alone. They want us to think that it is just, it is just you know, us against um, millions. It's not so. We, we are probably the majority. Well, they're the minority. And that's what, that's what, that's what 
Satan wants us to believe so we can be defeated. But it says, yet this apostasy, widespread as it has come to be, is not universal. Not all in the world are lawless and sinful. Not all have taken sides with the enemy. God has many thousands who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Many who long to understand more fully in regard to Christ and the law. Many who are hoping against hope that Jesus will come soon to the end, uh, will come soon to end the reign of sin and death. And there are many who have been worshiping Baal ignorantly. Think about that. But with whom the Spirit of God is still striving. I meet these people all the time in my encounters. And that's why the Lord has me out there. Because there are people who they're just, they're ignorant to what is going on around them. They're, they're not all evil and, 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 and knowing um, in a way that, you know, they, obviously there's corruption and there's wickedness and there's people that, that yeah, but there are those also that, do, that don't understand. These, these need the personal help. Listen to that. These need the personal help of those who have learned to know God and the power of his word. You hear that? These need the personal help personal help. This is, listen to this. In such a, such a time as this, every child of God, every child of God should be actively engaging in helping others. You know, we can sit and complain, right? We can make other posts and, on Facebook and Twitter. We can, we can even give people a thumbs down and we can, you know, try to out argue them, but that's not what we're called to do. We are called to help. We are called to help. I mean, we are the Great Commission. As those who have an understanding of the Bible truth try to seek out the men and women who are longing, these people are longing for light, angels of God will attend them. You remember, when we go out and do this, we're not alone. And where angels go, none need to fear to move forward. How do you think I do what I do? Do you think I do this alone? I don't do this alone. I've got angels with me. As a result of the faithful efforts of consecrated workers, many will be turned from idolatry to the worship of the living God. Many will cease to pay homage to man-made institutions and take their stand fearlessly on the side of God and his law. So I had to share that this morning because that is so powerful. And it starts off by thinking we're overwhelmed, thinking we're outnumbered. But you know what, my friends? We're not, but it is up to us who have the knowledge and the word of God to help those people. Are you willing to help somebody today?